Hello everyone. Today on the Obscure History Channel, we'll be talking about the Lapita culture. The Lapita culture is an ancient culture located in the Pacific Ocean in a region known as Oceania. What the Lapita people are known for is being one of the earliest settlers in the regions of Melanesia, Polynesia, and some parts of Micronesia sometime between 1600 and 500 BCE. The Lapita people are also associated with the distribution of Polynesian culture and Austronesian languages in Oceania. The origins of these people link back to Taiwan, southern China, and other nearby regions where the people who migrated to the Philippines, Madagascar, and Oceania came from during the Austronesian migration. Today we're going to take a dive into the archaeological record of the Lapita to capture what we have learned from them. The year was 1952 when Edward W. Grifford and Richard Shuttler Jr., two archaeologists, began an archaeological excavation that took place in New Caledonia. At Site 13, the archaeologists found a lot of pottery, which would become the most well-known cultural feature associated with this ancient culture. What the archaeologists also found was a settlement along with these pottery shreds, which were dated around to 800 BCE. The archaeologists didn't know at that moment that they had found something which would forever impact the field of early oceanic history. When the archaeologists were in New Caledonia, they also misheard a word spoken by the locals, which was Japita'a meaning to dig a hole in the Haviki language, which they heard as Lapida, and that is how the name of the site and culture came to be. The beautiful Lapida pottery is known for having these motifs, which consisted of swirls and distinctive geometric patterns that have these complex and repetitive geometric series. Archaeologists have classified over a hundred different motifs with the pottery they uncovered. Sometimes these motifs also included anthropomorphic figures in their designs too. How the Lapita were able to decorate their pottery with these unique designs was that they got a tooth-like tool, then stamped it onto the unfired clay before it was heated. Their fired pottery included cooking pots, bowls, and beakers. What is also interesting about the Lapita pottery is that their designs and styles are split up into three sub-styles by archaeologists to indicate the region and time period each ceramic artifact came from. The first sub-style is called the Far Western sub-style, some also call it the Early Western style. The artifacts of this substyle are dated around 1600 to 1200 BCE and were found on the Bismarck Archipelago near Papua New Guinea. The characteristics of this substyle's artifacts include extremely well decorated motifs and complex vessel forms which were made using fine tooth like stamps. The second substyle is the Western Lapita substyle, where the artifacts are dated after 1200 BCE, and they were found in the Bismarcks as well as in the Solomon Islands of Vanuatu and New Caledonia. The pottery found in the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, and New Caledonia from this time period will be the earliest sign of Lapita culture in these places. There's a bit of a difference with this substyle compared with the first, as the pottery of the substyle typically was thought to be made with a coarser tooth-like stamp because the designs were less complex and decorated in a less elaborate manner. This substyle also ranges from when it lasted from region to region, as in some regions the style of pottery was seen until the year zero, and in other regions, the style was not used again after 500 BCE. The third and final substyle is the Eastern Lapita substyle, which was found in Fiji and Western Polynesia, where the style began around 1000 BCE. Similar to the Western Lapita substyle, a coarse tooth like tool was used to create these designs, resulting in a more simplistic pattern found with these motifs and less vessel forms. This substyle also ceased to be seen at different times in different islands throughout the region, as it was seen until around the beginning of the 1st century CE in Tonga, but in Samoa, this style was no longer seen by 800 BCE. What these differences in pottery styles with the Lapita shows as the pottery spread from east to west over time, the decoration and patterns got more simplified and became less complex. One of the biggest reasons why the Lapita culture is associated with Polynesian culture is that some of these patterns found through pottery could be found with modern tattoos that have Polynesian patterns. Not only are some of these designs seen with tattoos, but on the islands of Tonga and Samoa with the reproduction of traditional crafts called Siapo in Samoa and Nagatu in Tonga. In Fiji, the Lapita motifs are seen as being a part of artistic techniques called Mazi, which are used in textiles, woods, and other carvings as well. What the archaeological record also reveals is that the south and east of the Solomons, Lapita is the founding culture and it represents the first human occupation of remote Oceania. The pig, dog, and chicken are free oceanic domesticated animals derived from islands southeast Asia, and the Polynesian rat, 
Gratus Exulans, is of Asian origin. What we also know is that the Lapita has a distinct settlement pattern of large villages. These villages contain stilt houses built over lagoons or on small offshore islands and are located close to the shore. The origins of the Lapita crop complex are still unknown, however, there is debate on whether or not the crop complex of the Lapita was from Asian or Southeast origin. The next part of Lapita culture that must be discussed is their language. It is theorized that the Lapita spoke a Proto-Oceanic language which contributed to the formation of the Austronesian languages spoken in Oceania. We do not know of the exact language that the Lapita spoke, and the archaeology of the material culture doesn't give too much insight into the details of the language either. But what we do know is when the division between the material culture occurred with Tonga and Samoa during the Lapita period, it exactly matches the breakup of Proto-Polynesian into the Tongic and Nuclear Polynesian and Linguistic groups. When the Lapita culture spread past the Bismarcks in 1200 BCE, it is theorized that the Proto-Oceanic language split up around this time. Within the following centuries, rapid linguistic change might have occurred where the Proto-Central Pacific language developed some of its distinctive features around 1000 BCE, and Proto-Polynesian soon to follow, and finally the Tongic and Nuclear Polynesian linguistic groups to follow after that. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more brief, obscure history bits. Also, feel free to comment below what historical topics you'd like to see covered.